Hello, this is Joe Jacobson, back with another video in the step-by-step -step blog building series. And we're still in the setup mode, and we're getting ready now to configure and customize your theme. And here are some of the steps. Of course, you need to log back into your WordPress dashboard and go find that theme that you just uploaded. In the last video, we covered that, how to research and find the theme that you want to use, and then how to upload it. So we're going to go through that live here in just a minute. But what you'll need to do is go find that, that link right here, the options, a theme options link. And it can be found usually in the menu on the left of your dashboard. And what you do is you go in there and click on it. And then it'll take you through. If, if you have a theme that even is very customizable, a lot of times they're not that customizable. You can only change a few very simple things. But the example I'm going to show you is a free theme that is actually pretty darn good as far as being able to customize it. So I'm going to take some time to really go through that and show it to you. It's a, it's a theme you actually might want to use. I highly recommend it. Like I said, very customizable. You can pretty much make your website look and, and act just about any way you want to. And the example I'm going to give is right here. It's kind of a tough one to pronounce. In fact, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I say Atawalpa, Atawalpa, something like that. And that's the name of it. And we're going to go there in just a moment. And then also, maybe I'll briefly show you how you can save that theme and export it if you should choose to use it somewhere else on another domain name, build another site, another blog. You can actually save the settings so you don't have to do it all over again. OK, so let's go take a look. OK, I'm actually going to start out right from scratch here, just as a little bit of a reminder as well. I know everybody now knows how to log in to their WordPress dashboard, but I'll go ahead and start from scratch anyway. So what again, what you do is I'm going to go over here to one that is a demo site for the class here, demo domain name dot info forward slash WP admin. WP dash admin. And that's how you get to your login. Type in your username, your password, and then click on login. Got that lockdown number, that security right there. You get back into your dashboard. Okay, here we go. In the previous video we went through all of this dashboard. We toured the dashboard and we had a close look at all these links. And then we also came down here to whoops, there it is, appearance. And we loaded up a new theme. And actually there you go. That's the current theme. But that's not the one I want to demonstrate. That'll be another video because that one's even more complex. But right here is that. Here it is right here. Atawalpa. And I'm going to click on it and load this one up. So it my, becomes my current theme. Right up in here to the right, you can click on Activate. You may have to do this still if you haven't activated it. See, so now it shows that it's my current theme. Atawalpa. OK, so now what happens is it puts a link over here under Appearance right here at Walpa theme options. Okay, this is what we're going to click on now in order to get into all the options to customize this the way you want it, the color schemes, just everything in here. It's pretty pretty customizable and not too difficult. Just basically what you're going to do, and let me start out by before I start making any changes, let me start out by opening a new tab. And I'm going to go directly to the site right now. This is what I usually do is have a separate tab open so I can see what changes are being made as I make them by just clicking on the other tab here. And here it is right here, the actual website. So you can see here when you change, here it is, when you change your actual, I'm sorry here, it went blank for a second. Uh, when you go ahead and change your theme, it changes instantly, even if you have some content in there. 
but of course if you customize the theme then it's, it's not going to take those customizations over to your new theme necessarily. So you can see right here I already have some content in with that previous theme and it does bring them on, bring them on over here as, as links and pages in this new theme. So it doesn't have a title right now. I just wanted to show this to you briefly just so you can see what it looks like and maybe what we're going to change it to. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the WordPress dashboard and what you do is you just come in here right up in the top here is export import settings we don't need to do this right now but it is a pretty nice feature <coughs> where you can have after you set your settings you can come in here and export it and download it and then use it somewhere else and there's some more information in here it's not that difficult really you just import it in into your next blog that you might be building but we don't need to go through that right now basically uh, configure SEO you can do that here or you can just do it in one of the plugins which we're going to cover in the next couple of videos uh, we have some special plugins just for SEO search engine optimization so you don't need to do it inside of this theme okay if that doesn't make sense to you don't worry about it we're going to skip over that for now but we come down here to the body and text okay so and by the way you can go through all these and probably figure it out yourself but I just thought we'd go through here anyways and give you a few tips here along the way and this is the actual style of the body and there's a little bit involved I mean you can read it here and pretty much understand it and for the most part it talks about putting spaces below the layout and and what you do is you need to put it in this block right here all the changes that you want. You can change the font, the size of the font, the line height and the color and so forth. So this is a, like the basic body style. That's the body of the actual where the content would go. And then this cool feature this one has as well is you can change all of these that have these color schemes here. You can actually click on it and change like this one is the link for all the links you have on your website you can change the color of it you can also change the color after as you're hovering over the link in this case it's the same so what you do is you click on this and you can see right here it brings up this color scheme I hope you can see that in the in the video and you can just click inside it anywhere in here and get the get a new color that you want I'm not going to change this for now you can do the same here with the link hover and a few of these other things here the decoration you can underline them in this case or bold them and then you click on save changes okay I didn't make any changes there let's go on down to layout now this one here you probably will definitely make some changes I, I can see mine is set here to 990 pixels px for pixels by default it comes out 99 percent but that's pretty big especially if somebody's looking at it on a laptop or a widescreen or a big screen I mean it's almost stretched out too much 99 percent of the monitor size so usually I like a fixed size it just kind of keeps easier for formatting and for headers and so forth custom headers so 990 still pretty much fills up the whole screen for a Oh, a basic home computer monitor which is you know, I guess it's what, 14 inches and you can read this in here it doesn't really apply so much unless you're you have the fluid layouts meaning it expands as the monitor gets bigger but not applicable if you use the fixed which is what I usually do you can also change the layout cont container style and you'll probably want to do some of that. I always like to have a border around it right here. Looks a little bit nicer in this theme. You can change the background and the radius of, of the, the actual boxes in there. Kind of like it shows right here is the radius. And you need to put those inside of here. Okay. Go ahead and click on Save Changes. The next one is a favicon you can add that later that's basically this little you can see it right up here I zoom in 
when you go to a website, it's the little icon or part of your logo that's right up in there next to your address when somebody goes to your website. Okay, not a huge thing, but you can add that in. Now the header, this is the header area. Style in the header area is kind of important with this Okay, with this theme, you come on down here and you can, you can see right here, here's the default. It puts in the pages and the logo and then these horizontal bars and the image. Let me just go over, to, jump over to the page and show you what that means. Okay, here's some horizontal bars. Here is the image right across here, this, this main image, which can be rotating images as well. Several images and also right up in here which doesn't even show there's no title at the moment this is where the logo area would be okay so that's what you got up there in this case i changed it a little bit uh, oh, i'm sorry pages and, and categories okay that's here these are the pages up here and then these are the categories right here on this horizontal menu area there's just one category right now. And the default one is uncategorized. Okay, so you can put that in there. You need to decide how you want to have that. Actually, if you really want to get creative, you can you can have more than one menu bar and you just simply put them in there in order. Got the logo. If you these pages, if you wanted the pages down lower, in other words, if you wanted the pages down here next to the categories, you can do that and have two menus. And you just would take these pages, copy it, take it out of here and put it on over here to the right. And then that's going to make the changes for you. So you don't need to know any real coding here. You just need to be able to follow the directions in this. You can have a special styling on your logo area if you want, choose to, and determine the height of that. And you just, again, actually see what you can do is copy this and just paste it right in there. The background, you can do the same thing. Paste it right in there. Just like that. And then you can change the color of <coughs> the background. We'll cover that maybe another time, or maybe later on in this video, how you change the color here by this code. This is called the hex code. Okay, the border, same thing. You can paste that in there as well. And I'm not going to do that right now. You can show a, a logo in there. You can position it by showing the margins here. Margins showing the left and right and top and bottom. Okay, I'm not really going to get into that right now, but at least so you know it's there. Then you can choose to show the blog title. See, I'll go ahead and put yes in here. And you can give it some description as well, the font color, the padding the spacing, line spacing, and so forth. And then you can also give it normal or bold. I'll give it a bold. And the coloring, you can change the color again right here on that actual title of the text. And then when they hover over it, you can give it another color, which it has here, which is red. Below that will be the tagline. That's the name of your business. And then below that is the tagline, usually doesn't have one right now. Actually, I haven't set one up. So I'll leave that at no. You can format the tagline. You can show yes or no on the search box. I'll show that in a second here. Format the search box. And you can have a little bit of text even in the search box. Let's see if I have that. Search box, yes. Okay, so right in here you could put type keyword. Something like that. I'll show you that in a second. And then you can have these horizontal bars in there around your header. So let me click on Save Changes. And then we'll go over and on the website and take a look at the effects that it did. You need to refresh the screen. You can hit F5 to refresh the screen, at least on a PC. Let's see if it made any changes here. Sometimes it doesn't actually show them. When you do that, you actually have to click on another page here and it might throw in the changes. There we go. See, there's the title. There's not much of a title, really.
but that is the title. You hover over it, see it turns red. Here are the, the post links, which is for a feed. Talk about that later. Comments as well as here's that type keyword that I, that I typed in back there. So that shows up. And I think that's all the changes we made. And here's the different image. See, it rotated in a different image. So you can have whatever images you want. This happens to be, see there's no actual content in there. And this is the demo site. Okay, so let's get back there. And that's the header area. The header image is where you can customize the header image area. You can have them rotate in with different images. You can make the header image clickable. You can determine the height of it. And you need to do that depending on the size of the image you're bringing in for the header. You can align it to top center, top left, etc., etc., center right. Usually top center or top left is what I choose. And this one has this little extra special feature where you can have this opaque overlay on the left or the right side. I don't know. I never end up using that. But it might be nice if you want that effect. And you can determine the size, of course, of that opaque effect, the color of it. And all this has to do with that. And then you can actually overlay, in this case, a little blog title right inside over the image, which could be good. OK, so you can save space there. And then you can format that box, this image overlay, in any way you want. And here's some suggestions. And you can simply paste them in right here to make the changes. And then you click on Save Changes. Let me see if I need to do that. Now I didn't make any changes. OK, RSS settings. That's a feed, RSS. OK, if you don't know what that is, we'll probably talk about that later. Right now, we're just talking about formatting in general. But there's an RSS feed on there. And this talk should, tells you about it, the size of the box. Basically, just a lot of formatting that you can do. OK, you can show it, choose to show it or not. You can even not have it show up there by clicking on No right here. And that's about it here. The feed burner, we'll probably talk about that a little bit later. And you click on Save Changes. Now, here's two that are pretty important. The page menu bar. Now, the page menu bar is right up here. Right across here, in this case. Usually it's at the top of this particular theme. So you, this is where you format it. You can show a home page or not. You can exclude pages from there if you wanted to for some reason. And just basically format the rest of the bar. Pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to go into depth too much in here on all of these. OK, you can have pages and sub-pages. That's what this one's about, how deep down you go with the subpages. And you can have borders around them, background color. And you can change the color, actually, of the actual background and the fonts and everything in that menu bar. OK? And you can have the width of the submenus determine that as well. Okie dokie. Category menu bar. And that's right down here. Now you can see this one's blue, so I must have formatted it before. Normally it's like gray. But you can change the colors of all these to match the color scheme that you want. For instance, if you have a header up in here that has a lot of blues and in it and things like that, you know, you can change this color. If it had a bunch of greens in it, you can change the color scheme to match that. Okay, so basically this is the menu bar, very similar to the page one. You can change everything inside of there. And now remember, pages are different than posts. Posts are, are what you're going to be writing inside of certain categories. So you always see that category term up in here. And categories are what you're going to be writing about over time. Many different articles within the same category. So this talks a lot about the, the categories here. You can have borders, the coloring. Here, see, it's blue. Cover over, it's a little bit different blue. So I guess I had changed this at a different previous time. 
and you can go ahead and change it to whatever color matches your scheme. Change the font, the link colors, all that good stuff. Very similar to the pages. Okay, then we get into the center column. Usually you don't have to change this too much. You know, it's maybe a little bit more advanced than what you need to, to know right now. Uh, so we're just going to probably skip this one for now. And you, there's a little bit of sidebar here, styling you can do. Now the sidebar is actually not very visible on this one, but it's over here, this to the right. This has one right sidebar, this whole area right here. There's actually no content in it. You can just barely see this little gray box. This is the sidebar area. Usually that stays the same no matter what page or post you go to. Usually it's the same, though there are some plugins that allow you to have custom specific sidebar material on specific pages. And we'll probably cover that later on in the plugin section, the plugin video. Okay, so you can format the left and right sidebar. Now if you don't want a left sidebar, Normally these come checked, okay, but it, all of them are checked. But if you don't want it, you just need to uncheck them. And then you can skip over all the left sidebar formatting. You can also have an inner sidebar. You can actually have four actual columns here of information. Two sidebars and then the main column of content. In this case, usually I just want to have one right sidebar. So I leave those checked. Okay, you can exclude certain categories if you want to. And then you can format the width. Now these are not applicable because we're not showing them. The only one that's applicable here is this right sidebar and I gave it a, a width of 280 pixels which is pretty good. You want a pretty good wide sidebar so you can get some good stuff in there, including videos. Okay, you can format them a little bit. Normally I don't fool that too much and click on Save Changes. Okay, you can also style the widget area and I mean there's a lot of customization you can do here you can see without knowing a lot of coding and, it, and you just walk through these and you can you can get the drift of it here. I'm not going to really go through all these. I usually don't fool too much with formatting these. Widgets just tell you what it means basically. The widgets areas and items are what's inside of the sidebar again over to the right here. This is where the widgets reside usually. You can put widgets in other places but normally they're over here in the sidebar. Whatever sidebars you have displaying. So this one comes with some default formatting and normally it's pretty good but you can you can change any of that through here. You can also add new widget areas. Okay, you can you can put them up in the header area. You can put them inside the main column area. You can put them in the footer area. Okay, a little bit more advanced. You can play with that a little bit later on after you get more familiar with this. Now here's some editing you can do and formatting for the posts and the pages. Okay, there's a lot of good stuff you can do in here. I usually don't do too much in here either. Look, usually looks pretty good. It's, it's a little bit complicated for, for especially for the beginner. I mean, you don't want to have to read all this stuff. Let me scroll down here. Just continues on and on. But in here is where you'd actually put in these, these codes that you read about up in here. This is where you actually put them in down here and here and so forth. The bylines. A little bit, little bit over, over the head here for, for a a beginning video. So I'm going to skip that for now. Okay, style the posts and pages. Again, very similar to that other one where you can format in here. Let me go to the top here. You know, the container where, for, where that post comes out. And a few other good things here. I'm not even going to try and explain all these things right now either. The kicker box, the footer. You can probably leave most of this just the way it is. Unless you really decide to get into this, then you can play with it more. Excerpts, I'll skip that. That's pretty much the same thing as the post, except it's an excerpt. 
thumbnails. The default usually turns out pretty good on that. Commenting area. Let's see what we got here. This is where people can comment on your blogs. A few things in here. Again, the color, formatting, the background. A lot of formatting you can do just about with everything. It's a very powerful, a very powerful theme, as you can see. An avatar. You can change the size of that. That's basically somebody's uh, image of themselves used uh, during the commenting and in the reply sections of the blog. Okay, so you can do the footer. You can add in some things there. Basically, the format is right here. By default, usually that's pretty good. Just puts in, you can see the coding in here, but it automatically will put in your, your blog name in here, your domain name, and usually that, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then we, uh, you can come in here and do some more styling. We're just going to skip that for now. Tables, forms, so forth. And they all look pretty good, the defaults usually. The archives page, and, and you're not going to really get into any configuring of the CSS coding or JavaScript as a beginner. Okay, so you can see in here a lot of stuff that you can work with, some real basic things that you will work with for sure in the header area and you know the pages, things like that, a few of these areas. And that's all found again under the appearance tab and then under the options for the particular theme that you have loaded. Now most of the themes, the free themes you find out there, maybe even some of the premium themes, they don't have all these options right here. So maybe that's good, maybe maybe it's not so good, but if you want a little bit more control and customizing ability, then you do want to find some good themes and make a note on this one that it is one of the, the one, ones that do have a lot of customization potential. Okay, so that's what we wanted to cover pretty much in this one, how to go ahead and customize and, and configure this particular theme. Most of it's the customization of, of the layout and colors and so forth. So I hope that you got something out of this one and in the next video we're going to go ahead and start moving into the plugin. We'll see you on the next one. This is Joe Jacobson with Step by Step Blog Building.